Hopefully, Mark will join us in a minute or two. Anyway, welcome to our kickoff meeting. As I went, it, uh, Ken Colmia, introduce you to Ken Colmia. He is the PVC representative that is going to help us steer us through this process and guide us on what is required and help us along the way. And so it is uh, 601, we'll call a meeting to order. And first up is to elect a, well, actually, we should wait till Mark gets on to do that. Um, so I will let, before we get, just so everybody knows, uh, Mark Dunn texted me today. And although he initially signed up to be on this committee, he said he can't be on, he's got too many things going on. So he's, Mike Sarzinski from the planning board has volunteered to take his place, but Mike can't make it tonight. So it'll just be the four of us once Mark shows up. Um, so once Mark gets on, we'll do the, we'll, we'll get a selectman and a, and a clerk. In the meantime, I'll let Ken kind of uh, let us know what this committee is about. Sure. Um, so Jim, I guess is, is the group gonna be what, five members? Yes. Okay, um, that's great. Um, so as I mentioned to um, the joint meeting of the planning board and at the, was it economic, is it the economic development, housing and economic development committee? Is that the, the actual title? Um, we are gonna pursue um, working on this housing production plan. And there are certain elements um, and through the next couple of months, we're going to figure out how to um, inform those elements. Obviously some are census data, the new census data that has come out. Some are data that we would find um, through forecasting, through our conversations with the town, particularly any sort of building permit or Otherwise, um, and I'll you know share the, my screen and show you what I'm talking about. Um, but formally, um, this particular um, committee will be helping to ensure that we have the right data. Will be a guidance um, to um, look at work product, as well as. Um, just be the, the voice of the, the committee and the work that's being done that um, PVPC is, is helping um, you facilitate. Um, so I am going to quickly share my screen as far as, you know, this, this first kickoff meeting is, is pretty informal. Um, Is this your screen or my? That's your screen, Jim. Can I share my screen? I have the billet. Do I have the ability to? You should be. Bill made me host. I've never hosted a meeting where I've had other people share. So, so Jim, uh, what you press is the share screen. There should be a little arrow, or I think maybe if you press share screen, can you do that? What I've done is I go into participants and I would select Ken and to the right, it'll say more and it'll give you the option to make him a co-host. So, somehow I've shared my screen, I think, and I haven't, didn't intend to here. <laughs> uh, there should be a red box that says stop sharing at the top. If you drag stop your mouse there. down. There we go. Okay. So we go to participants, participants at the bottom. Go. And then and go over Ken. to Ken and all the way to the right should say more. Yeah. And if you click uh, on that, you can make him a co-host. Oh, is that what it does? And that will let him share, yeah. There we go. Okay, make your co-host. Does that Great. work? That works. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Well done, Jim. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm I'm gonna just um, kind of go back to when we met um, last month with regards to just some of the, the basics of this housing production plan. Um, you know, we know the reason why um, the town has over 10% of subsidized housing inventory. That is something that we'll be addressing as far as a um, goal and a strategy to maintain that. Um, but 
you have this um, this this information from the um, the kickoff meeting, but I think what's important here is um, some of the the next steps, right? So, with regards to starting now until August, the intention is to collect the quantitative and qualitative data on housing and demographics, meet with the town staff and officials as needed to obtain and clarify housing issues. You are going to be representative of some of the, the issues that you're hearing on the ground, as well as um, contact with town staff, like um, the building department um, and or the town administrator. Um, any anyone that and probably the assessor too is 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 a is a department that I would be in contact or a, a staff would be in contact with. Um, and then it is the goal of these next couple of months to start preparing these particular chapters, the intro, the housing assessment, the housing development conditions, um, and then utilizing this committee to review those documents. So. Um, I'm just going to switch screens here because I think I have everything open that I want to. Um, I prepared just this basic outline of what types of data needs we will need for the housing production plan. So to inform the first, the first uh, portion, which is your housing assessment, um, your community, assessing the community will come up with some um, data and present data based on population, understanding who lives in Hadley, um, and we're using these particular um, types of um, criteria. And I think if, if they're in this conversation or conversation that may arise in future meetings, if there's some additional data needs, then we can take a look at that too, if you think that informs particular process. Then we'll talk about housing supply. Um, usually it's to um, uh, discuss housing units. What is the current housing inventory in Hadley? Looking at occupancy, um, ownership versus rental, age of housing, the housing types, what types of housing um, can you find mostly in Hadley? I think typically as you'll find in the Pioneer Valley, it's mostly single family um, detached product. Um, and then looking at the house, affordable housing inventory. So this is the subsidized housing inventory of which Hadley has over 10%. We look at um, just mentioning any sort of group homes, um, the housing authority and um, their responsibility, and then the uh, Massachusetts rental voucher program, which is um, section eight mobile um, vouchers. And then we look at the housing market and we look at um, costs and what it costs for housing, um, the single family home market, what it costs to homeowners. I think, as I mentioned at the last meeting, affordability, um, and I may have mentioned this, I, I've been talking to many communities about housing and affordability particularly, which um, in the sense of affordability in housing, it's 30% of your income going towards housing costs. Anything more than that is obviously um, considered not affordable and you're paying more than what is typical or one is paying more than what is typical. Then we look at actual development constraints, limitations and opportunities in town, particularly some of the geographic um, constraints um, and you, you see here the listing, um, there's other, um, other types of um, geographic constraints that we'll be looking at. And then um, maps and producing maps of developability within town. Um, that's to look at current um, zoning, as well as what the limitations for development may be in um, throughout parts of town. Um, just to identify those constraints presented in this plan. Um, another tool that will be coming out of this is actually identifying parcels or properties that the town may have been discussing as far as um, opportunities for housing development. And I think we, everyone on this call is familiar and I know that having worked in Hadley for a while, 
are working with the planning board and working um, with um, some other initiatives within town, the, the property across from the town hall, um, trying to understand what types of development opportunity there may be, um, but that not just that, if there are other parts of town that um, the town may be exploring or could explore um, for additional housing. And then actually creating the housing plan, which are the goals and strategies. So those are some of the data needs that we'll be talking about um, over time. And the intention is to start working on those initial chapters, at least providing you the baseline um, and providing the committee and the town the baseline of the data that exists. Again, that's the census 2020 data. If there happens to be 2021 American Community Survey data, which typically they it will trickle out um, during this time between the summer, um, we can use those data sets as well, but we'll make sure to source those data sets when we actually write the plan. Um, another component of this particular work is, let's see, um, let me open this PowerPoint one more time. Um, so that's gonna be what we're gonna be talking about in the next couple of months is this discussion of the housing assessment, housing development conditions. And then we'll work on the second half um, talking about your strategies and goals that you'll set. Um, in this time, we're looking to schedule one to two community meetings, um, virtual or in-person, dependent on um, which the committee prefers. Um, and more than likely, which may what may happen, and as we're starting to inch towards the summer, a lot of the, the communities that I'm working with on housing plans or even comprehensive plans, um, the engagement is not really starting earnestly until the September, because we're now approaching summer. Um, and the summer usually is not a time that um, there's maximum participation due to vacations, whatnot. Um, so that's what we'll be doing. Um, and so this is the other important part. And this is going to be what we talk a little bit about today, but maybe some homework for the committee um, is a survey. Um, and I guess I'd like to know, um, is the town currently doing any survey tools? Are you doing any planning processes that currently are um, happening with a survey attached to it? And I think that's a good start because we want to ensure that we have as much participation as we can with regards to this housing survey. It is a component of understanding community sentiment towards um, the housing planning portion. So I don't know if um, anyone has any insight to that, just so that we can try to maximize how we're communicating with the community. So I guess I've got a question um, maybe best answered by, by Dave and Laura, and I believe that the Council on Aging recently participated in a survey, but I think that that survey has been completed, although I don't, I don't know that. Do you guys know? It has been completed. Um, I can't quite remember the time frame, but it looked at the needs of older adults in Hadley and housing was a large component of it. We're working with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission currently, going over the results of the survey and putting together sort of a comprehensive PowerPoint. You're working with Becky, Becky Bass. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, she did. She did mention that the Council on Aging was doing. Um, she was doing some engagement with the Council on Aging, and obviously that's a, an important part of this conversation, um, and will probably come up as one of the goals or strategies um, in regards to senior housing and how to plan for that. Um, however, we also have to, to try to engage the younger, um, the younger population, especially if um, there might be an idea to um, in, invest and um, try to figure out how to provide different housing types for younger families, for people, and with a price point that may be easier to get into, um, into the market in Hadley. Um, but 
that's just uh, a com that's just commentary. Um, so it, it's good to know that the um, Council on Aging has had a survey because that will inform um, and be able to inform components of the plan, particularly when it comes to older adults. Um, but if there's nothing else, I think that we may be in the clear um, with regards to um, doing a survey or, you know, where we may not be as um, hampered by people being tired or residents being tired of taking surveys, because that's, that's an important thing too. You don't want that to happen. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go through um, a survey draft that I put together. Um, and this is particular to a couple of questions that we usually ask in our housing production plans. Um, usually it's about the possibility of moving within the, ten, within the next 10 years. So it's understanding um, who in your household, who may be wanting to move, will they be moving within Hadley? Will they be moving elsewhere? What are the plans? Um, and so that is your question one and two. And again, I think if um, I'll, I'll be providing this to the committee um, because I'm just springing it up on you, but I wanted to, to quickly go through it just to, to show the intention of the questions that we're going to be trying to ask um, because I think that's important um, data that will help inform some of the conversation with regards to housing types, with regards to um, where housing is located. Um, and those are important conversations to have when you're planning for housing. Um, the popular question about what types of homes, um, so, you know, single family detached, duplex, condo, um, the planning board will be helpful in here to determine, um, you know, if any of these houses are even allowed, um, you know, working with the planning board, I don't think mobile homes are allowed, but, um, yeah, it, it's just confirming what ends up being in the final product. Um, and then talking about the actual housing inventory, let's see, where is that? So the types of housing, single family starter homes, um, mid family homes, uh, let me add another zero here, uh, single family homes, duplexes, condos, apartments, age 55, living communities. Hypothetically, if you were to buy a home or rent a home in Hadley, could you afford it at its current marketplace at the moment? Um, and this is the question where I think will be helpful to determine what parts of Hadley um, these new housing developments could be located. So if there are certain areas of town that um, we can identify here, that would be helpful. Um, additionally, if we want this to be more general to say, because having these conversations with the planning board, like maybe there's some additional density to be had near the malls, right? Um, a mixed use product near the malls. Does this say something along the, the, the lines of Route 9 and Maple Street in that intersection? Um, with regards to where possibly new housing can be located. Um, you can be very specific, you can be um, not as specific, but I think that's a, that's a question for the committee. Um, the types of qualities um, that are necessary for new homes to be built in town. Um, designed to fit the neighborhood, that's typically um, one that we would include located on existing sewer and water lines. That's um, an important one, especially if you're talking about denser development. Um, you know, and I think some of these are, um, probably will provide insight into the types of housing type, or the housing types that would be something that the committee and the town may be wanting to explore um, in the future. And then um, what should our priorities be for helping to keep homes affordable and in good condition for people who live in Hadley or may wanna move here? 
Um, and these are some typical responses that I took from a, a, some various other surveys. Um, I have to update these numbers, but um, knowing that in 2021, um, the threshold, uh, what is affordable to low and low moderate income varies by household size. And in 2021, it's 67,300 for a family of four. So understanding that, you know, um, are these the are the are these questions and responses helpful to understand what types of priorities Hadley may be wanting to move forward with to ensure um, this affordability in town? Um, and then a ranking question that would allow um, one to, to, to choose the five most important roles that the town should play in ensuring housing for all. Um, and these are some of them. Again, you know, we can walk through those. And then the ability to, you know, give your last response where it says, what is the most important thing in town to improve the quality and affordability of house, house homes? Um, and then finally, there are a couple of questions about demographics and self-identifying demographic questions um, for the, the survey taker to respond to. Um, what's important is this, the intention as is usually the case is to provide this um, ver um, um, online. So mostly wanting to, to have folks um, respond to the survey online, have a couple of paper copies either in the senior center or any other public building, um, but um, just allowing for that would allow for um, maximum participation. We'll do a media release, we'll do a poster um, and you know, try to post in town where we can get some robust engagement. Um, and maybe that's what we try to do within the next month, finalizing a survey and then putting this out in June um, or the, the first half of the summer, and then um, analyzing the data to put into our community meetings in September. Um, but yeah, so I, I wanted to talk about data um, in this first meeting just to, to show you what the types of data sets we would be trying to um, work with um, to help inform the actual development of the plan, in addition to a survey tool that will help <laughs> uh, gauge the community sentiment regarding <laughs> some of the priorities that are typically identified um, as strategies to um, preserve affordability or build affordability in town. Um, but that was the, um, the intention of this initial meeting was to discuss that. Um, so I don't know if anyone has any questions. This is just me talking at you for the past uh, 25 minutes or so. Um, but if there's any initial thoughts, um, yeah, please, please go ahead and ask. Have you actually used a survey like this before? Yeah, so... This, this survey, um, particular survey we used in South Hadley um, mm -hmm. when they did their housing production plan. Um, and they had a, a pretty good turnout. I think I wasn't, I wasn't um, working for the commission then, um, but we use a multitude of different types of questions. But I think what the state has been looking for um, and what has, signed off on because that's the goal of this plan is to ensure a certified um a certified approval by the state um is to to kind of gauge the sentiment um regarding how um easy it is to move in town what the the um affordability factors are your housing types understanding what types of housing development the town may be wanting to um, explore as far as this housing production question, which is definitely something that has come up um, during the Baker administration. And also, um, um, 
yeah, understanding um, where that's the other component is where the where where new development should ha be happening. Um, but yes, we have used this survey tool before. And you probably already said this, and I missed it. But did did you see this as a mail survey or or some something that would be handed out in some uh, situation? Well, I, I guess that's a good question for the committee. There's not a large budget. So normally what I would do, um, and in other communities, there there is a little bit of a lift by the community to either um, just have survey surveys available in the town buildings. I can print them um, and I can drive to Hadley and drop them off where they would need to go. Um, but there, I mean, if we want to look at a mailer, um, that obviously is going to eat into the budget and eat into my labor. Um, but we can take a look at that. Um, well, um, you have the ability to translate the online survey into multiple languages. That's another thing. Um, we would have to, to look into translation services. Um, I don't, I have not in the communities that have um, um, done these surveys before, have not requested translation services. Um, so I'm, I'm not familiar, but we can take a look, especially if there's a particular language that we need to look at. I can't help but think that uh, it would be good if there was something like at the, we couldn't do it at the next town meeting, obviously, because that's right around the corner, but even, is there a scheduled date for the fall town meeting? Typically, that's in October. That'll be. That's going to be too far out. So I suppose, and if we're supposed to have this done by the end of the year, maybe we couldn't wait that long, then, huh? Yeah. I mean, but, I think the seniors had pretty good success. Um, it was on the. They had a link on the town website. They had it at the library. They had it at the Council on Aging. Um, I don't recall that they involved the schools, but the schools have a mass. Um, a newsletter that goes out to all of the parents. There could be a link there. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are a variety of different kind of, you know, Hadley Learns and in other groups in town that I think this could get circulated. And I, and I think to Dave's point, there may be some people who aren't comfortable with um, using an online tool. So to the extent we can supplement that with, with hard copy um, so that they could mail it in would be good. Yeah, yeah they definitely have people like that yes <laughs> the, the uh the town the town collector has asked me about sending out a survey and she said the time to send out a survey is with the water bills not the tax bills because the water bills goes to the residences the tax bills goes to the owner of the facility and the resident that may or may not be the case she says mm -hmm. if it was a one-page survey she could send it with the water bills in the summer and it would be no charge to the committee. Oh. However, I doubt this is gonna be a one page survey unless it really condensed it down and it's probably not gonna work. But what we could put in that next, the not this coming water bill, but the one for the summer is a one page blurb saying there is a survey, you can access it here, you can access it here and let the let people know that they can go into the, wherever we may have a senior center, town site, et cetera, and let them know that there is a survey to be, to be utilized, mm -hmm. that they can put the information in and maybe even something if they want to mail it to let, you know, uh, let the committee know, maybe we have to send out, you know, some number of mailers, but that might be a whole lot less expensive than sending one out to every resident in town. So, yeah, I think you bring up a great point, Jim. And this is what some other communities that I work with, when they're trying to get the word out, this is like the prime time to either put a blurb in some sort of um, email or letter that goes out to, to residents. We can maybe, I don't know, we might be playing it very close, um, probably not. But what would happen to like during town meeting, um, having maybe a handout um, that would have a QR code that would take you to that survey link 
um, with the same information that if you wanted a paper copy, you can go to town hall, whatnot. Um, but I think if we can work towards um, finalizing the survey, putting it online, printing it, and then having a blurb that we can prepare on a note. And if the collector is okay with putting like either even a half sheet um, into the mailer, that could be helpful just to, to increase engagement. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me interrupt a bit since uh, evidently Sean is not here tonight. And again, I'm, I'm assuming Lauren is filling in for Sean tonight. Would that be a safe bet? Um, no, I'm not sure who Sean is. is oh, I'm sorry, I'm Mark. You, you, Mark. Sean is yeah. the. Uh, I think Sean. I think Lauren would like to be a member of the committee. Could, yeah, that, would that would that be I a think, possibility, Jim? Well, I think the, the planning board Dave, set up the, the, set up, the the planning board set up the committee as two planning board members. Um. Two, one from the Council on Aging and two from the uh, uh, Economic and Housing Development Group. So, Laura, is that you're actually the senior center, right? Council on Aging? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, Sean is, Sean is supposed to be the other one before Molly, correct? Correct. And Mark Howard's supposed to be Sean's alternate, but neither one of them are here tonight. Right. Okay. So, um, Mark is on, but he's, like I said earlier, Mark has other commitments. Although he volunteered initially, he's not going to be on this committee. Mike Sarzinski from the planning board will replace him. Um, so um, he's officially on the committee right now until we get Mike, Mike on next week of the next meeting. So are you, are you there, Mark? <laughs> okay. I am. Um, I wonder if we should not, because we were essentially missing two members tonight. Yeah. Not, I, I hate to have, with well, only a five member committee, it's kind of not the best thing to do to elect a chairman and a, and, a, and, a, and a clerk with only three of the five members here. So we'll hold off on that till the next meeting. Um, I'll take notes and then at the next meeting, we'll officially elect the chairman and clerk. So if everybody's if everybody agrees with that idea, um, anybody have, have anybody think that's not the right thing to do? The only right. alternative would be to name the two missing members the clerk and the chair. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so. That would be a good way to keep them missing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, all right. Um, okay. So we, you know, Kim's talked about that and. Um, would be with the, what we're going to do. When is the, is this? When is a good time for these meetings? Since this is the first one, we can kind of, you know, what is the, what is a good time for the other committee members? Is this a good time? Another time? This is a good time for me, except for the second Wednesday of every month. Okay, so. we won't be meeting that. We're not going to be meeting every Wednesday. I'm, I'm thinking we're probably meeting twice a month, maybe yeah, sometimes but, three times. But if you said we're well, two weeks from now, that would be a time I wouldn't be available. But. Okay. Yeah. So, but other than that, it's it's fine. Uh, or for that matter, uh, in my case, uh, Tuesday or Thursday night is all right too. Not Monday night, not Friday night. Yeah, but I don't want to meet on the Friday. We're making it during earlier in the week. A lot of people are, do things on Friday nights to go away. Um, so you said the that would make it the May eleventh, David. Yeah, I can't make it then. Yeah. How about if we make our make regular meetings the let's say first and third Tuesday, first and third Wednesday of every month? That 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 that's six o'clock good. That okay with everybody? Yeah, my my only caveat to that, Jim, is it's okay now. Um, there's a town election coming up. And that may or may not impact me. Um, right, because that's the select board meets on Wednesday. Oh, because of selectmen, if you're elected. Right. Yeah. Oh. But I mean, that's, you know, and 
that, again, that's that's a what if. So we could always um, do oh, yeah, that. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, well, well, let's set the next meeting for, well, we won't know until the 17th. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, let's set the next meeting for the 4th, 6 o'clock, May 4th at 6 o'clock. And then um, on that meeting, we can set the, or the second and f the first and third Tuesday, Wednesday is good for you, Ken? Um, actually, the first and third Wednesdays are not good. The second and fourth Wednesdays. Second and good. fourth. Yeah. Um, but I can meet on the, on the, the fourth um, if you'd like to. I had a, just a canceled meeting. Um, if you want to elect your chair then um, and <laughs> talk again about the survey, we can do that if there's okay. you know, things Ooh. that you and then And then schedule from there. Okay, let's do that. Let's set the next meeting for May 4th at six o'clock. And then we'll set up the next meeting after that, depending uh, what's going on. And uh, it's going to be the fourth, it's going to be the fourth Wednesday on the 18th or the 17th, 18th, whatever it'll be. We'll know if Molly will be available or not. What if the, what if the second and fourth Tuesdays? Is that not good for everyone? Well, that's an idea too. For me, I'm only available the fourth Tuesdays. I usually have a standing to planning board meeting on the second Tuesday. Okay. So the second Tuesday and the second Wednesday are out. <laughs> when else did you say you were available, Ken? <laughs> um, I'm looking, I'm trying to find the email that I sent Jim. Um, Cause it, it okay. was, okay. yeah, it was specific to at least right now. Um, let's see. Yeah, Cause I'm also um, going to be on vacation the last Memorial Day weekend. Um, so a little bit of the previous week, I think Thursday through the Tuesday. Um, where is it? Jim. Um, first and third Mondays, except for May 2nd. Mondays in general are not good for me. Okay. So and let's just meet on the 4th. Okay. Everybody appears to be able to make the 4th. And then we can decide from there um, when we might be able to have our next meeting. So, yeah, I think for the fourth, then, Jim, um, and this committee, I think if you want to take a look at the survey based on the conversation we had, um, you know, if there are some nuance in question that you want to ask, or if there's additional questions that you think we should be asking, take note of that. Additionally, there's those blank questions uh, about locations, um, you know, and we can have a conversation at the next meeting about that. Um, what I will do too, and I think I may have shared this when I was talking um, with the, the joint committee on March 15th, um, is to look at the, um, to be reminded of what it says in the town's master plan. Because usually that's a, that's a place to start with regards to goals. Um, particularly, this was done in 2017. So I'm gonna quickly share um your master plan update and what i usually do is go down to um so here are your um, dhcd subsidized housing inventory from 2016 will ensure that you know this this is probably of note um taking a look at what these mountain view apartments will are looking like um because there's 25 units that may expire in sunset next year um in addition to any increase that may have happened since 2010, because your percentage here is based on a 2010 census. So we're going to um, see what those new numbers or what your new percentage looks like. Um, but this is gonna be a conversation for another time. Um, 
it's it's the goals here. And usually we use this as a starting point. We usually inform the housing plan section, which is your chapter four, um, by including these goals. Um, if there is a refinement of the goals, we can do that. Um, if there are strategies um, that have been identified, normally what would happen during um, some of this process is to talk about, and I don't think I put the uh, matrix in here, um, but understanding um, the strategies that the town has identified to um, try to achieve these goals and see where the town is. Um, for instance, consider amending the zoning bylaw to make clustered residential zoning a by right use. I don't think that's happened. Um, and require a special permit for standard subdivisions. Um, similarly, some of, and these are mostly regulatory um, discussions, but I think there are some items down here and further on um, on talking about, yeah, typologies, increased densities where uh, serves other planning goals. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna share that document. Um, what I'm gonna do too is because we have PVPC um, and I'm still learning, we have Microsoft 365, which allows me to share. Um, so I'm going to put this in a folder and have it available to the members of the committee. Um, and maybe that's what I'll just do so that you'll have access to this document as well as that um, the survey. Um, you can obviously download that document or work off that document um, to um, how you, however you want to, um, but I will send that out to you. Um, I don't know, is there anything else for this, this particular discussion? And, and the survey can say, we're gonna, you're gonna give us a link that'll access this document as opposed to sending us a copy of it? No, I'll send you both. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna send both. Um, it's gonna be practice for me and practice for whoever wants to practice. Um, I'm all about trying to build capacity of, especially of these technology things that I'm still learning. Um, but I will send everything as an individual copy, as well as a link to the folder where all of these documents will live okay. and um, iterations of drafts and PowerPoints. Um, that'll be for the town after this project is done. Um, the, the committee or members of the committee can download whatever is in that folder and it'll be part of the town's records. Um, but that's the intention as far as um, doing, you know, information share and, and, and the, the documents. Okay. So for the next meeting, we will have, have get the members of the committee will be studying the survey, have input if we want changes, additions, subtractions, whatever the case may be. Um, we don't want to make this a book either. We want to make it if it's to, if the survey is too long, people are going to look at it and toss it. Right. So you want to make sure that it's com reasonably complete, but not cumbersome to complete. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's. I mean, and and I think what I'm going to do too is try to play around with the formatting so that it doesn't look like it goes on five pages, um, because I think if you go more than four pages, it's like, oh, this is too long. Um, so I'm going to fix a little bit of the formatting so that I can get at least it on, you know, two pages back and, right. and you know, on two sides. Um, so that could be helpful for printing. Okay. That's, yeah, that, that'd be good. Um, anything else you want to raise up right now? No? Okay. Um, Anything else can you have? That's it for now? Yeah, I think that's it for now. Um, uh, again, I will just share everything that I've shared the screen tonight. Um, and if you have any comments on that or comments, feel free to email me. Okay. Um, and we can discuss those comments at the next well, Why don't you e e email me the stuff, Ken, and I will forward it to everybody else okay. in your contact. That'll okay. make sure everybody gets it. So make sure you don't miss any, we don't miss anybody. Sounds good.
Thank you. And I'll give um, Sean Barry a quick call to before the next meeting, just to make sure, you know, I'll just recap what we did. Okay. Okay. Um, that's it. Motion to adjourn. So move. Do I have a second? second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting. Meeting. Yeah, meeting is history. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Lauren. And we'll keep you informed.